are here to do what I believe is the third video in a series that I do every couple of years, which is a video about books that I think are overhyped, a video about books I think are underhyped, and then a video about books that I think are correctly hyped. You know, overwhelmed, underwhelmed, whelmed. This is the whelmed video. So these are books that I think are correctly hyped for what people say about them. Therefore, I, for this one, I think probably the thing I can do is describe who I think that this would be a good book for, what I think this book is good at. Therefore, if you're looking for that kind of thing, this is a good recommendation for you. And I should note that all of this is relative to what I see in the zeitgeist in terms of the level of hype. Some of these I think are absolutely fantastic and are hyped as being fantastic. Some of these I think are solid and are widely recommended as like, yeah, this is a solid version of this. So it's not necessarily that these are, you'll, you'll see a range in terms of if you watch this channel, what I thought about these books when I read them, but I, I think that the hype or the dialogue around them from what I've seen is correct. And that is what this video is for. So let's dive in. Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel was a huge book last year. And I think that this is correctly hyped. Uh, if you are looking for a really well written literary take on sci fi, so time travel, multiple timelines. If that is what you're looking for, I think that this is a really good version of that. And uh, I think this also would make a good book club pick. I actually we did pick it for my patron book club. And people had some interesting things to say about it. So I think this is correctly hyped. Next is A Lots Away by Darcy Little Badger. This was a middle grade fantasy release a few years ago that ended up having a lot of sort of ground support for it and has been very hyped for people who like literary middle grade fantasy. And so is it the most hyped book out there? No, this bordered on for me being under hyped, but I think for the market it's going for, it is correctly hyped. And if you like the idea of middle grade fantasy with a higher writing quality that has indigenous and queer rep in it and is a lot about family, I think that this is a very rightly hyped middle grade book. Then Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. This was a Reese's book club pick. So I mean, Reese's book club, one of the most hyped places something can get pushed. Uh, there's a couple on here that I'm tempted to put into underhyped, but because they got picked for Reese's book club, I'm like, I don't think I can call those underhyped, but they're so good that they deserve in my opinion, even more hype potentially. But um, this one is YA. I'm gonna tell you I would think of this more as new adult or a bridging book between YA and adult for mystery thriller. This is a very intense book about the plight of native women and girls. This is a, ooh, I, it's like I can't even tell you too much about the mystery thriller because it would spoil things. But I think that this is a lot about passing, about having a dual cultural identity, and is a really, really good version of mystery of again, a kind of more literary mystery thriller that is marketed as YA, let's say. I'm noticing a trend here in the correctly hype, a lot of them being kind of like a more literary take on their genre. I think that's because people who are primary literary fiction readers get really excited when there's a literary genre book that they can get into. And therefore I think it ends up getting even more hype than it would otherwise. <laughs> but I do think that this is a good version of that uh, and would definitely recommend. Next, let's do a combo for Carmen Maria Machado. I think both In the Dream House and Her Body and Other Parties are both correctly hyped. This is a short story collection that has a lot of magical realism in it and thematically is very much about feminism. This is an experimental memoir that is so good and is about intimate partner violence in femme relationships or like women loving women relationships. And uh, both of these are incredibly hyped. This is a National Book Award finalist. This pr I'm sure has won a ton of awards, but both of them are absolutely fantastic and are as good as you have been told that they are. Oh my gosh, dude, yes. Now that I'm looking at this, the theme of this correctly hyped really is 
things that have a literary quality to them. Now <laughs> that I'm looking at this list. Uh, know My Name by Chanel Miller is another memoir. I don't recommend this to everyone in the sense of this is an incredibly emotionally taxing. You need to be in a good headspace to listen to someone talk about their experience with sexual violence in a really frank and thought-provoking way. Mel Miller is an absolutely fantastic writer. So in addition to the story being very compelling, so this was the um, Brock Turner assault case that was very infamous here in the States a few years ago. And Chanel Miller was originally the Jane Doe with this very famous victim impact statement that went viral. Uh, she was an English literature m undergrad major, so sh she's just a really, really good writer. So this is as good as you've been told, but you do need to be in the right headspace to get into this area of discussion. Now, now I'm just breaking this into like, which ones of these I think are more literary versus not. There's a few of these that I think have a little, uh, slightly less of a literary quality. Um, though are still, I think, good, good versions of what they are. So I'll save those for last. Sister the Serial Killer by Oyin Ken Braithwaite. Uh, this is pitched as a mystery thriller. I don't know that it really is that. It definitely, I mean, it's in the title. Her sister is a serial killer. So there is that element to it. But I think it reads more as sort of a generational family drama with a lot of murder in it. Very darkly comedic. So that's not going to work for everyone. But this got a ton of hype sort of like word of mouth building for it, which I think it totally deserved. And I hope people are still picking it up, even though it's a few years old at this point. I think this one really lived up to the hype for me. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Now I, this didn't like blow my socks off the way that some people kind of hype to me that it might, but I definitely see why this is so hyped. It is very cozy, I think. It is very cozy in the sense of kind of the relationships between the characters, and it definitely has this sort of sense of found family to it. Um, this is a very well-loved series that I'm personally not gonna continue in, but if you have wondered if this kind of lived up to how much people talk about this, I think that I may have liked it even more, frankly, if it hadn't been so hype, but I do think that it deserves the hype that it gets and I think it has um, a pretty wide appeal for people who are interested in some kind of sci-fi with some good strong thematic elements baked in. So a little bit of that literary quality. And another sci-fi kind of more literary book is Stories of Your Life and Others by Ted Chiang. I would put both of Ted Chiang's in the category of Believe the Hype. This is very hyped in kind of what I think of as like newspaper book coverage. So sort of like mainstream press coverage of books. Ted Chiang is very hyped and he's had um, at least, uh, oh gosh, what was that book called? Um, or the movie Arrival is based on the title story of this. So he's also had some like mainstream success. But these these stories are absolutely fantastic. There's, uh, I think both of his collections have at least one story in it that I consider to be an all time favorite short story. This collection is pretty strong top to bottom. So if you are a literary reader looking for some sci fi, or if you're a sci fi reader interested in trying something a little bit more literary, I definitely recommend this and it definitely lives up to all the hype that he has gotten. I couldn't find my copy of the fifth season, so I'm just going to put the obelisk gate here as a placeholder, but the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin is one of the most hyped books of the last decade in speculative fiction, particularly you know, considering that all three of the books in this trilogy won a Hugo, <laughs> that says a lot about the kind of esteem that that trilogy is held in, at least by certain parts of the sci-fi fantasy loving world. I found that the fifth season absolutely lived up to the hype. It is beautifully written, very layered in its themes and in its world building, uh, very dense in its ideas while still being a very entertaining fantasy story. If very grim. So I'm very excited to continue in the trilogy and I do think the fifth season at least completely lives up to the hype. Okay and then the last one that I think kind of has a little bit more of a literary quality though uh, 
Two of the other ones I'm going to talk about I think you could argue also do a little bit. Razorblade Tears by S.A. Crosby. Sorry, S.A. Cosby, not Crosby. Uh, this is just an absolute, I mean it's called Razorblade Tears and it made me cry. This is about, I would call this a revenge thriller probably, which is not my typical genre. But I think that this has crossover appeal even if that's not your typical genre either because this is so much about the relationship between fathers and sons and regret of fathers after their sons are killed in a hate crime. They Their sons were in an interracial gay marriage and they are murdered because of it, basically. Well, somewhat. It's, I mean, there, there's layers. There, there's like kind of a conspiracy. So this is a revenge thrill, thriller and also sort of a conspiracy thriller. But um, I just think that the character work in this is absolutely fantastic. And I'm really glad that I read this upon people's recommendation because this isn't normally my kind of book but this was just so well done that I think it totally lives up to the hype and I it's very widely recommendable I think. Okay now getting into some books that I think are a little less literary but I think you know still none of these are badly written. I'll save the one that I think is the most commercial for last. The Maid by Nita Prose got a ton of hype I think because of the voice of this. It's a very voicey mystery. That voice is either going to work for you or not, but I think if you are drawn to the idea of a non-twee a non cozy, this is definitely worth checking out because I think that this accomplishes that. It doesn't have that sort of cutesy tone to a cozy mystery that sometimes is not really my thing. So you get some of the the cozy fa like interpersonal dynamics and a mystery without the tweeness, which I think works. And then the voice of the main character really worked for me in this, uh, but it won't work for everyone. So try like a sample chapter. And if you like that voice in the sample chapter, then I would definitely recommend continuing because I do think that this is deserving of the hype that it gets. And then this again, while I wouldn't quite call this literary, I do think that the writing is really really high quality and I do think it has a lot to say thematically for a piece of commercial fiction. So this one I would say is kind of on the bubble of being a literary thriller which is probably why it made it into Reese's Book Club but Wrong Place but Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister is my favorite thriller I've read in quite some time. It's hard to get a five star for me on a mystery thriller and this did and I think if you are just looking for something that is both entertaining and I think has some things to say about the nature of time and the nature of sort of our leading nature of our time with our loved ones, I think that this really just hits it out of the park. So good. Believe the hype. I was tempted to put this in underhyped, but it is a Reese's Book Club <laughs> pick, so I don't think I can, I don't think I can really do that in good conscience. And then last but not least, I'm gonna say Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Uh, believe the hype. If you are looking for cozy fantasy and you do not need it to have a big plot, here you go. This was as cozy as I was led to believe. It's very character driven and it has been a huge breakout hit and it's one of the rare breakout hits that I'm like, I get it. This is so good. It totally lives up to the hype, in my opinion. Though, of course, you know, everyone's different. But for me, this is one of those huge smashes that completely merits the attention it has gotten. It is so lovely, so cozy, so wonderful. So yeah, that is my list of things that I think are correctly hyped. So let me know what you guys think of my list. Let me know if you agree with the level of hypage I have assigned that you think, if you think that these are correctly hyped or if you, for you, are these under or overhyped or me, these are correctly hyped based on what I've seen in my kind of realm of influence and the way people talk about these. For me they're correctly hyped but let me know if you disagree. If you have any read-alike titles that you think are also correctly hyped I'm sure people would appreciate seeing that in the comments as well. So drop them down there and uh, yeah I think that that will do it for me for this video and for wrapping up this round of hypage videos and my commentary on the hype that I see for different books that I've read. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I think that that will do it. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!